Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is our gospel reading from Luke chapter 13, where Luke tells us that tells us that there were some present at that very time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, for the past three and a half weeks, we have been witnessing suffering, the suffering of the people of Ukraine as they have been invaded by Russian forces under Vladimir Putin. We have observed not just suffering, but atrocities being committed, a maternity hospital being bombed, a theater being bombed where on the pavement outside the theater in Russian was written the words children. We have no idea how many Ukrainians have died in this war. We hear that 7,000 Russian soldiers have been killed in this conflict. It truly is an atrocity, an abomination of what, what we are seeing happening to the people of Ukraine. But you know, we see stories of disaster and suffering every day. A little less than a year ago, there was a condo collapse in Surfside, Florida which took the lives of 98 people. An immense amount of suffering and death. And what we see in our text is that suffering and death and atrocities are nothing new. They're not unique to our day and age. These people, whoever they were, came to Jesus to tell him about these Galileans were told that their blood had been mingled by Pilate with their sacrifices. That, that's a way of saying that while these people were worshiping, Pilate had soldiers kill them so that their blood mingled with the sacrificial blood of the animals in the temple. That was a first century atrocity done by the man who ultimately would be the one who would sentence Jesus to death, Pontius Pilate. Well, upon hearing this, Jesus brings up another instance. About 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam collapsed and crushed them to death. So death, suffering, even atrocities are nothing new. They have been in the world ever since the world was plunged into sin. But Jesus teaches us some things about suffering and death and disasters and atrocities. As these people brought to Jesus this report about these, these folks who were killed while they were offering their sacrifices, Jesus asks them a question. He had discerned what was on their minds. He asks, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? Well, you know, sometimes that's the explanation that people will give. That essentially when people suffer, they deserve it. They must have done something to anger God and now they are under his judgment. 
Now we know sometimes God does work that way. Take, for example, in the Old Testament book of Genesis, the twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were wicked cities. God was fed up with their wickedness. And he planned to destroy them. In fact, he sent a couple of angels into the city of Sodom to gauge how wicked the city was. And it was very wicked. And so, God did bring down destruction upon them in the form, literally, of fire and brimstone. So we know that, yes, there are times that God's judgment does fall upon people because of their wickedness. But take, for example, the Old Testament individual Job, a righteous man who suffered terribly, not because of any wickedness that he had done, but God allowed him to suffer at the hands of Satan. So we cannot say that when some disaster befalls people, that it's their fault and that they are under God's judgment. That is not necessarily the case. Well, after clearing up that misconception, then Jesus turns his attention to the folks who told him about these Galileans whom Pilate had killed. He warns them, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Many times when we hear stories of suffering and disaster, God's desire is that we take stock of our own life. Paul talks about that in our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He points to the Old Testament Israelites, the ones who had been rescued by God from their slavery in Egypt. And he says that they had gone through the cloud and through the sea, the, the pillar of cloud that God used to guide them, and the Red Sea that they had gone through as they were escaping the Egyptian army. And he says that in that sense, they were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they also were fed by God, the manna in the wilderness, as well as the water that came forth from a rock. They were fed and nourished by God during the wilderness wandering. So they were baptized and they were given food by God. And yet, we're told that God was displeased with most of them because they proved to be faithless even though they had been baptized into Moses even though they had been fed food and drink by God their faithlessness resulted in their inability to enter the promised land not just in the land of Canaan but even the promised land of heaven and Paul says Look at these people as an example. Because you and I also have been baptized, not into Moses, but into Christ. And we are fed and nourished by our God, not with manna and water from a rock, but rather with the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that comes to us in the bread and wine of the Holy Supper. So we've been baptized We've been fed. Paul says, do not take your salvation for granted, but consider the example of those people who had those blessings and yet lost them because of their faithlessness. When we see disaster, when we hear of suffering and death, our God would have us look into our own hearts. Our Lord Jesus tells us to repent so that we do not perish, so that we do not take our salvation for granted because we were baptized a long time ago and we went to Lutheran grade school and we've gone to communion in our lives and we were confirmed 
The life of the Christian is a daily life of repentance. A daily acknowledging of our sin and guilt. A daily seeking of God's grace and forgiveness. And we do not know when the day of our personal disaster will be, the day of our death. We dare not play this very dangerous game of, I'm going to sow my wild oats now, and when I'm older, I will get on the straight and narrow. Later on, I will do that. We are not guaranteed a later on. That's why Jesus tells the people of his day and us, unless you repent, you too will perish. And when we repent, when we seek God's grace and forgiveness, we have the assurance that it is there. It is there for us because of Jesus. Jesus posed the question about the Galileans or about the folks that were crushed when the tower collapsed on them. He asked, do you think that they were worse sinners, worse offenders than other folks? And his answer is no, they weren't. Jesus, however, was. Jesus, when he was on the cross, was the worst sinner in human history. That's because Jesus had upon himself the sins of all people for all time. I'm only accountable for my sin, not yours. You're only accountable for your own sin, not the sin of others. Jesus took upon himself the sin of the world. He went to the cross as the worst sinner in human history. And it was on the cross that he suffered the punishment, the wrath of God against all the sin of all humanity for all time. That's why we are assured that when we repent, there is grace and forgiveness for us because Jesus took our place on the cross. He suffered the wrath of God that you and I deserved so that we might receive the love and acceptance from God that we do not deserve. In our times of disaster, whatever form that might take in our lives, in our times of suffering, whether it is self-inflicted or inflicted by others, in our times of need and at the moment of our death, we can find hope and comfort in our God because we know that in Christ we are not abandoned in those times of suffering. We are not forsaken in those times of disaster because we have a Savior who knows suffering. We have a Savior who knows death. He is with us in our times of suffering. He is with us in our moments of disaster. He is with, with us even if we suffer atrocities. And he is surely there at the time of our death. In him we have hope and comfort. Because he endured for us the wrath that we deserved. He endured the suffering that was ours, that we might have the promise of life. Oh yes, there are disasters in this world. There are atrocities. There is suffering. And that is the, the state of history from the fall into sin until the last day. But we also have a God. God 
who through his son Jesus is there with us in our sufferings and who assures us that when we repent of our sins, we find his forgiveness for the sake of Christ. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.